What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And today, as I'm sure you're well aware from the thumbnail, we have an unboxing of the collector's edition of CrossCode from Strictly Limited Games or the Strictly Limited Games partner store. I'm just gonna say this is a Strictly Limited Games release. Anyway, when I, I found out about this game maybe like a year ago, I read something maybe on like a Twitter post or something on Instagram. Instantly, instantly, the first thing I thought about when I saw CrossCode was Cosmic Star Heroin. And for those of you that know me, you know, I, I like the shooters, right? But I also like RPGs, especially those indie RPGs that are kind of, they have that uh, that style of like a retro, like a 16-bit game. And that's what this game is all the way. It's got a 16-bit uh, vibe to it. Um, you know, even though Cosmic Star Heroin plays completely different, there's a lot of elements of Cosmic Star Heroin in this game, you know, they mainly in the art style. Uh, this art style, I'm just going to say this, in CrossCode, the art style that they use, although I do like it, it's just the way some of those characters, uh, the way they look, it's just, I, I'm not 100% with it. I'm like maybe 75% of the way there, okay? But it's just, it's one of those indie things. It's like, so I guess that'd be like, what, like kind of like a Dojin game, right? And, you know, when I think about that, you know, that, that kind of gives it the cool factor. So I, I tend not to think about the art style that they chose to go with. Although it's not bad. It's just the way some of these character looks, it, it, it's kind of weird. But uh, this game actually came with a steelbook, right? A steelbook for a Nintendo Switch game. I don't think I own any steelbooks for Nintendo Switch games. Like, yeah, I got them for DVD size cases and, you know, uh, Blu-ray PS4 games, stuff like that. But... Uh, you know, the closest thing I have to a steelbook for the Nintendo Switch would be the Shining Residence Refrain uh, Draconic Launch Edition. And it wasn't even a steelbook. It was just a, a metal shell that encased the actual Switch game itself. Same thing came out for the PS4. It held the Blu-ray case. But anyway, let's uh, open this thing up. And since this is a strictly limited games release, it, 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 it's boxed the same way as all the other ones are. At least all the other ones that I've ever gotten. And uh, I, I love that, how they have the magnets to kind of close the box up. Um, Fade Extella, the Umbral Star, if you got, I think that's the name of that game that came out for the PlayStation Vita, at least the Vita version, I think PS4 as well. It had a case very similar to this where the front kind of had a magnet that held it together. So anyway, and here we have a bunch of stickers and it looks like there's, uh, there's a lot of stickers here, guys. Although I'm not going to use these stickers, it does look like there's a sticker for every single character that is in this game. Um, and maybe there's for every facial expression of every character that's in this game. That's a lot of stickers. And we have the soundtrack. Now, staple items for a collector's edition, at least at least for me, the, the main two things that you need that I would actually consider a collector's edition are the game itself and the soundtrack. If you want to add an art book in there, that's, uh, that's great. I love that. But when you think about uh, collector's edition, like Ikaruga, Ikaruga, right, for PS4 and Switch, it came with that uh, that little kit where you can build a little metal figurine. My actually, my kid loves building those things. But you can build a little Ikaruga ship figurine, but no soundtrack. When even in the description of the collector's edition, the game was touted for its amazing soundtrack, it lacked a soundtrack. They came with the collector's edition for the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch, and I think that's completely unacceptable. Um, but anyway, I don't know why I'm going on about that. We don't have to worry about that here. We do have a soundtrack and we do have a pretty nice hardbound covered art book here. Um, yeah, anyway, so this game, I've played it maybe two or three hours at the recording of this video and, uh, I, the story is kind of gripping me. If you guys have played games like, uh, like either Dot Hack GU Last Recode or the original Dot Hack, um, uh, Sword Art Online, it's kind of one of those, uh, those stories where there's an MMO, and there's something going on inside of the MMO. It's a, the story's not exactly the same, but you catch my drift. Um, and I absolutely adored Dot Hack GU, the GU series on the PS2 and Last Recode for adding that fourth story. But that's a that's another topic for a whole other video because uh, we won't even talk about that fourth installment of uh, the Dot Hack GU series. Anyway, we have a poster now. I don't know that my woman would let me put this up in our house as it sits now, but eventually when I get another house and I have my own game, my own game room, maybe I'll put that up on the wall. Maybe I also have an awesome poster for uh, Steam Hearts on the Saturn, that, uh, or now on the Saturn, the PC Engine that I want to put up. Anyway, we have the game now. If you did order this from Play Asia, uh, the Play Asia cover looked a lot cooler. Um, 
And I, this might be a reversible cover. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, as far as the artwork on the cover, it looks like the collector's edition from the parent company of Strictly Limited Games or sister company or whatever chose to go with the uh, different artwork. Let's just say that. But I do think what was posted on Play Asia looked a lot better. Um, weight feels like there's a manual in here, and we do have a manual. Absolutely. Okay, so you can see there's reversible cover art there. It looks like it's just a white version of the cover and then a black version of the cover. Um, so... You know, nothing, nothing too crazy there. We have a control scheme paper there and the manual. Yeah, I mean, this collector's edition, I don't know what I paid for this, whatever the retail was, I probably like maybe 80 bucks or something like that from Strictly Limited. But you get everything that you want in a collector's edition, and hopefully I really end up enjoying this game. Because if this ends up being an RPG that I'm just like, you know, eh, I've heard good things about this game, then maybe I'll, you know, just keep the game and sell the contents of the collector's edition, you know, I don't know. Um, interesting facts about CrossCode, uh, developed by, uh, Radical Fish, not really too familiar with any of their work. Uh, this was made for Linux, Mac, PC, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and CrossCode is actually a launch title for the newly released Xbox Series S and X, and that's pretty cool if you have a little indie RPG as part of your launch title lineup, at least I think that's pretty cool. When it comes to video game systems, PS4, Switch, uh, new Xbox, I'm not, for any system for that matter, I'm not really into first party titles. You know, not for any company, unless it's some like retro stuff, like some old Mario games on the regular old Nintendo entertainment system. But anyways, guys, that's everything you get in CrossCode. Let me know in the comments, have you played CrossCode? Did you buy a physical copy of it? Did you get it from Play Asia or the Strictly Limited Games parent company? Let me know in the comments. Till next time, guys. Peace out.